CCT and welcome to Making It. Today I'm here with Catherine of Masterpiece Creative Tea. Hi Catherine. Hi Stacy. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for asking me. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you and explore some um, information about how your passion became a career. Why don't you start with telling us what it is you make. What I do is I blend different teas together to get different flavors. So I take black or green tea, um, high quality black or green tea, and sometimes I blend those teas together so you get the benefits of both teas, the benefits, uh, the health benefits of both teas, okay. but you also get the, the maybe the little bit of sharpness from the green tea, but a little bit of the earthiness of the black tea into one tea. Okay. And then I add flavors to come up with something totally unique and brand new. Excellent. Well, I was going to ask, and we do, we have quite a few samples here and uh, some of your packaging and some loose leaf and in your little sample cups, what do you have there? I have here um, samples of um, tea bag tea, like you buy in the supermarket, okay. and loose leaf tea. So to show you the difference and why you would not want to drink tea bag. They're always drank growing up was always right. a, a tea bag with lemon and sugar. Right. Sugar is also not that good in your tea. Um, it hides all the the real nuances of tea. Okay. And I think once you've had. Uh, loose leaf tea, good quality loose leaf tea, you actually don't want the sugar so much anymore, especially if you have the blended flavors. But let me just show you, this is actually in the tea industry called tea dust, and you can pretty much see why. And that's what's in the tea bags you would buy? This is in what a tea bag you buy look in the that. grocery store. Yep. And you see how it does indeed look like ground up tea dust. Yeah, this, it's like powder. Right. This is loose leaf tea. And even if these were wet, you would see these unfurl and actually look like leaves. Okay. Um, this is black tea. This is is a bag from a bag of chamomile tea. Okay. High quality chamomile tea that you can buy even in a health food store. And as you see, it's still all ground up. This is what chamomile tea should look like. Oh wow! The you can actually flowers. see it looks like flowers. Yeah. Right. The yep. actual flowers of chamomile tea. So that's the difference between loose leaf tea and tea bag tea. And I know some people will say, well, you know, the loose leaf tea is, is a lot more expensive. First of all, that's relative. It's not a lot more expensive because there are some pretty expensive high-end tea bag yeah. teas out there. But what the difference is, you can also get more steepings. Like for instance, if I were to make a cup of tea. Like how much three would you put pinch. in? Because we call I... it a three finger pinch. So okay. it would be like this, would go in for one cup, like about this size. So I would put this in my steeper, and if I I'll just use your pot, yep. it was in here in the steeper, I'd put it in there and pour it full of water. I could get probably three cups out of this oh, wow, little okay. bit of tea, because especially a good quality black or green tea without flavorings, you will get more um, cups of tea than you will. This is one tea bag. That's all you'll get is one uh, cup of tea. And you won't tea use it again, that. obviously. You won't use it again. Yep. But this you can use again, and in fact, I keep a couple of steepers going at my house where I have a green tea going and a black tea going and I interchange them throughout the day. So okay. it's a whole day's worth of, of tea out of this. Very nice. Yeah. So. so tea's always been your passion. It has. At one point you turned it into a business. I did. But your business came first. So your story is a little different than yes. your typical artisan. So you started out as a business first even though you had always enjoyed the tea. Right. But you didn't start blending and creating your own until after you had the business. That's true. Okay. I, I, had a, I had a tea shop, and I was selling other people's teas. Okay. Um, and not, I wasn't blending my own teas. So that came secondary, uh, came about um, by accident, if you want to put it that way. But I, I was uh, hosting um, our church's um, ladies group. Okay. And they are not into straight up black or green tea as that was I, as I was serving and they wanted something fruity. Okay. So I put together a fruity tea on the on the fly and it came out to be uh, the Women of Grace tea oh. is what we called it because that was the name of the group. They loved it so much that every week they kept wanting that same really? tea. So at the after the first time of making it I didn't write anything down. Oh, I so just, you kind of had to wing it again. I did have to wing it again but I actually came up with it again and now and then I wrote my recipe if you want to oh, good. consider it that way. So I go back to it. But even so every time you blend, even though it's a repeat tea, um, it takes a lot of tasting to get it still back to exactly how it was because, you know, it's I'm not an industry with manufacturers yeah. that just throw so out a recipe. So when you have your, your flavored tea or your blended teas, 
if you have two different ones, are you gonna are they gonna taste different if they're the same one, two different back you know packages? If you're getting the same three packages out of the same batch, no, they should pretty much taste all the same. If you were to get the say the late the Women of Grace tea today and come back and pick it up three months from today, it might, it might taste, taste a little, a little different. different. Not a whole lot and you may not realize it unless something that something a tea kind of sort of might notice but the right. average person might not. But all the ingredients would still be the same in the same proportions. It would just you know it's it's handcrafted. Yeah. So. Absolutely. It's like no Absolutely. two paintings are the same. When you had your business and, and, and the store, um, and then you started blending your own, is it more of a art for you still, or is it more of a business? How, how do you look at it more now? Still art. Still more of an art? Yeah. I, and, I care more about how they come out and how they're blended, and I enjoy creating new flavors or new yep. blends more than I worry about whether it sells or not. Oh, good, so. good, good. Now. Your your own boss, obviously, and you, I'm assuming you look at yourself that way. Yeah. And what do you find the best about that? What do you What do you enjoy about being your own boss? I get to make all the decisions. Yeah. <laughs> and if I fail, it's all on me. It's not on somebody else. Yeah. But basically, I get to make all the decisions on what flavors I make. There's nobody saying, "Oh, you need to make a bohemian raspberry tea," yeah. and it has to be done exactly like this. So I get to still be the artist that I want to be, and Absolutely. I'm doing it through tea. Yeah. Um, I also get to make my own hours. Um, That's a huge bonus. Yes. It is. Yeah. You know, on what days I put aside to make tea or sell the tea or. I just, it's my own. I can, I can do it from anywhere. Yep. I like to travel. I um, especially like to go visit different uh, tea shops. When I travel, I go and I, I look at all the different tea shops. I like to see what teas are uh, popular in certain areas. I try to bring some of that back with me or some ideas. Now, that. do you find it's kind of like a, a, a group of tea people, you know, per se, all the, the tea blenders, you are kind of like, we'll get ideas from each other and support each other and, and you know, learn so. from each other. Yeah, I think so because I know I, I don't hide that that's what I do when I yeah. go in and I will say to somebody, oh, you know, we have this, this bohemian raspberry that is such a big hit and they may not be selling a raspberry tea or they may be selling yeah. a raspberry tea and then we'll talk about, well, why is mine different than theirs? Yeah. And so in that way, um, yes. But I also don't find a whole lot of tea shops that blend their own teas. Really? Most people, most shops are selling already pre-blended pre -blended other teas. And when you had your, your store, you were blending them then, or you started right after? I started blending I, while I had the store, but towards the end of that, I really was basically selling other people's teas. Okay. But okay. I, I, when I made that first Woman of Grace, then the next one was Lady Wallingford, and I had people who wanted that little bit of bergamot, and um, <clears throat> that was the second tea I blended, and then it just kind of like a bug that bit me. I yeah. just enjoyed doing it. Another tea that I blended at the shop was the Sangria tea, and that was a um, summertime tea. It took it took days to blend that. I remember you talking to me about that before, and it, many batches yeah. and trial and error. To yeah, get that right that. nuance. I mean, obviously it's not gonna taste like wine, but I wanted that sharpness, but the sweetness, yeah. and um, for maybe somebody who doesn't drink wine, or you wanna have, yeah. you know, at a what, party. What's your favorite flavor? I would say probably the Bohemian Raspberry, but I do like the Women of Grace too. But I think the Bohemian Raspberry is my favorite. Now, is that a, a black or a green? It's both. Oh, okay. It's a mixture of black and green, oh, okay. and that I think that's why I like it so much. And I like raspberry. Bit. Where do you see masterpiece creative teas in a year, five years, ten years? Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, I would hope to see my teas take off into multiple shops, um, but only as long as I could still handcraft them. I'm yes. not sure I want to hand that over no. to manufacturing mm -hmm. or. Um, big business or anything like that it's because it's about being the artist absolutely and, and that's what I still want to do so as long as I could do that yep yeah that would be good. absolutely absolutely and who came up with your logo I, I like I, did. The... I like feathers yeah <laughs> as you can tell I wanted something a little on the bohemian side uh, that's kind of my personality and yep. my style of art so the name and the logo are, are mine. They kind of look like tea leaves, too. Oh, yeah, a little bit. And so it kind of yeah. went that way. Together. So are you a, a one-woman operation? It's just you? Just me. All by yourself? All by myself. Do you ever see requiring help or bringing somebody in or 
teaching somebody your you secrets know, or no no. <laughs> <laughs> no not teaching anybody my secrets I think if I were to have anybody it would be help in the packaging but it's not even that necessary right now I like doing it I like I like blending them and yeah there there have been failures just this week uh, before tea tasting I was blending the woman of grace I don't know what went wrong but I'm so glad I tasted it before <laughs> I packaged it it was terrible and I did have a friend over so that helps to have somebody else taste it yeah. as well and I gave it to her and I was like what is wrong but it was just so bitter I actually had to throw the whole batch really away. did she agree to oh, it yeah. wasn't yeah oh yeah I think I figured out what it was and um, it was a change up in the, the tea quality was better and richer on the green tea okay. and so it needed less of it is what it is and that's what I mean like you never know you the, never know the, the yeah. same recipe but the tea quality changed and it because um, I got it from a different place okay See, I like that that's that's my mistake or that was my tea that went bad it wasn't even yeah. really a mistake and threw it out and I can start all over and nobody's sitting there counting the pennies or mm -hmm. you know you can't throw you can't throw that out yeah yeah exactly like so, exactly yeah now tell me a little bit about the steeping part of it steeping is really important to a good quality cup of tea and I think that's where most people kind of make their big mistake because they'll follow the directions on the box or the bag so when you go to steep tea the water temperatures are really important first of all and for a general rule of thumb for green tea and black tea would be go ahead put your water on to boil and then turn it off and let it sit for about a minute for black tea maybe two minutes three minutes for the green tea uh, green tea steeps at a lower temperature and then you want to steep your tea probably about a minute to two minutes if really? you look at the box they're gonna say like three to five yeah the longer you steep tea the more bitter it is and uh, the stronger it is so I mean if you really like a good strong say an English breakfast mm -hmm. tea or a Scottish tea then you yes you could brew that a little longer or what I like to do is just throw a little bit more tea leaves in so you get that richness okay and that and another uh, cool trick is if you're watching your caffeine intake and you don't like decaffeinated teas is to go ahead steep out the first um, steeper full for about a minute throw that out and then steep it again and then you'll have less caffeine really in yeah okay so most of the caffeine comes out in the first steeping so it's it's good, well, to, know good to know too. It yeah. is. So you're not even like I said when I have my tea sitting for the day, by my third cup of that same tea, it's not nearly the same caffeine level. So I'm not getting all of that caffeine yep. um, as well. Very good. I thank you for taking the time today to teach us. I know I learned a lot. And my like I said, growing up, my mother would take the the tea bag, put it in, and and take it right out, and always the boiling water right from the stove. But you're saying right. now not to no. do that. I also think that tea is much better. Um, without the cream and sugar. I always drank tea with cream and sugar. That's how I was brought up. That's how my family drinks yeah. it. And I was an exchange student in France, and the first cup of tea they poured for me, I added cream and sugar, and they started laughing at me. <laughs> and I was like, what? You know, what, what did I do? And they're like, oh, you drink tea like the British. And so I never, I never, never drank it. it again with anything in it. Always drank that it straight. That was it for you. That was it, and still do. Um, but it is much better and when I hold a tea tasting I don't have sugar or cream out because you need to be able to taste the flavors pure okay. then if you want there are some teas that lend itself to a little bit of sweetness like the chai masala yeah um, I love is that really one. good I love that one. It, it is good and it's good with maybe a hint of, of sugar but mm -hmm. even better to use like almond milk yep. or coconut milk that has a hint of sweetness to it naturally yep. and it just pulls out that flavor the, the cardamom and the cinnamon yeah oh, I love it more, I really love flavors. it yeah, yeah it's a very good windy lady Wallingford I think it's perfect just the way it is I wouldn't add anything to it the woman of grace I have seen people add a sweetener to it it's fruity so maybe there's you know they like a little bit of that yeah. um, I prefer it straight thank you again and it's been very educational and I know I learned a lot and I'm sure our viewers did too I wish you much success thank in you. all that you do and wherever you take masterpiece creative teas thank you and thanks for having me. oh you're very welcome I'm Stacy T and I want to thank you all for tuning in and watching making it artisan stories and remember when you shop small you're supporting a dream